Hello, I'm Dr. Abhishek Mangeshika and today we're diving into a complex and often misunderstood topic, chronic pelvic pain. Chronic pelvic pain affects countless individuals and can be incredibly debilitating, yet its causes are multifaceted and often elusive. In this video, we're going to explore the neuropelviological approach to diagnosing and understanding chronic pelvic pain, focusing on how conditions like endometriosis, adenomyosis and various nerve pathologies contribute to this complex syndrome. Let's start by addressing endometriosis, a well-known but often poorly understood condition. It's crucial to recognize that the severity of endometriosis does not always correlate with the severity of symptoms. Some patients with severe disease may experience minimal pain while others with only subtle disease can report very high pain scores. This variability highlights the complex relationship between endometriosis and chronic pelvic pain. One key point to understand is that there is no consistent relationship between the extent or location of endometriosis lesions and the intensity of pain symptoms. In fact, studies have shown that factors such as inflammatory markers and nerve fiber density do not consistently correlate with the pain experienced by patients. Moreover, pain can recur even after the physical excision of endometriosis lesions, and in some cases, this occurs without any evidence of recurrent disease. This indicates that chronic pain cannot be solely explained by the presence of endometriosis. Chronic pelvic pain is a multifactorial condition, meaning it can arise from various sources beyond endometriosis. Here are some other conditions that can contribute to chronic pelvic pain. Adenomyosis, a condition where endometriosis tissue grows into the muscular wall of the uterus, often causing painful and heavy menstrual periods. Pelvic adhesions, these are bands of scar tissue that bind organs together, leading to pain and discomfort. Chronic pelvic inflammatory disease, or PID. It's a long-term infection of the female reproductive organs that can lead to chronic pain. Fibroids are non-cancerous growths in the uterus and can cause pain and pressure symptoms. Pelvic congestion syndrome is a condition caused by varicose veins in the pelvis, leading to chronic pain and a feeling of heaviness. Ovarian remnant syndrome is pain that occurs when ovarian tissue remains in the pelvis after surgery, such as after a hysterectomy or after an oophorectomy. Vascular entrapments and iatrogenic nerve injuries. These are conditions where blood vessels or nerves are compressed or damaged, contributing to pelvic pain. These conditions demonstrate that chronic pelvic pain is not a one-size-fits-all diagnosis. It's often the result of multiple overlapping issues that need to be carefully evaluated. Now, let's delve into the neuroanatomy that plays a critical role in chronic pelvic pain. The sympathetic nervous system, which is part of the autonomic nervous system, significantly impacts pelvic function. The sympathetic nerves help regulate blood flow, muscle contractions, and other involuntary functions in the pelvis. Pain signals are transmitted within the peripheral and central nervous systems, and the sympathetic nerves can modulate these pain signals. Irritation or dysfunction in these autonomic nerves can lead to visceral pain, which affects the internal organs and can also cause digestive symptoms such as bloating, diarrhea, or constipation. The autonomic nerves play a crucial role in the body's response to pain and stress and their involvement in chronic pelvic pain underscores the need for a comprehensive neuropelviological approach to diagnosis and treatment. Beyond the autonomic nerves, we must also consider somatic nerve pathologies, particularly those involving the sacral plexus and other somatic nerves. The sacral plexus is a network of nerves located in the lower back that provides motor and sensory nerves for the pelvis and legs. When these nerves are affected, it can lead to somatic pain, which is more localized and often felt in the skin, muscles, and joints. Conditions like pudendal neuralgia, which affects the pudendal nerve, can cause severe pain in the vulva, vagina, and perineum, making it a significant factor in chronic pelvic pain. Diagnosing chronic pelvic pain requires a structured approach, especially when considering the involvement of neuropelviological factors. Here's a step-by-step -step outline of how we approach this complex diagnosis. Step one. Determine if the pain is visceral or somatic. The first step is to distinguish between visceral pain, which originates from the internal organs, and somatic pain, which is more localized and related to the musculoskeletal system. Step 2. We identify the nerve pathways involved in the pain relay. Once we determine the type of pain, we assess which nerve pathways are involved. This distinction between somatic and visceral pain is crucial for developing an effective treatment plan. Step 3. We evaluate the level of the pain. This involves a thorough patient history, 
combined with digital palpation of the pelvic nerves to assess pain locations and dysfunctions. Understanding the combination of pain locations helps in identifying the specific nerves that may be involved. Step four, we then create a schematic diagram to map out which pelvic nerves are involved or if the pain may have a spinal origin. This step is crucial for visualizing the complex interactions that may be contributing to the patient's pain. Step five, finally, based on the patient's history, the results of the neuropelviological examination and the imaging studies such as a pelvic neuro MRI, we establish a potential etiology for the pain. Once we have a clear understanding of this, we can suggest targeted therapies that address the root cause of the pain rather than just managing the symptoms. Chronic pelvic pain is a complex and multifaceted condition that requires a comprehensive, multidisciplinary approach to diagnosis and treatment. By understanding the neuropelviological aspects of pelvic pain, including the roles of sympathetic, autonomic and somatic nerves, we can better identify the underlying causes and develop effective treatment plans. If you or someone you know is suffering from chronic pelvic pain, it's important to seek a thorough evaluation from a specialist who understands the intricacies of neuropelviology. Proper diagnosis is the key to finding relief and improving quality of life. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this information helpful, please like, subscribe and share this video to help others who may be struggling with chronic pelvic pain. And if you have any questions or would like to learn more about this topic, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to provide answers or cover it in a future video.